All right, uh, still the program here this morning on ITV on independent television. Good ones know that uh, the program is on now. I told you that we're going to be there looking at uh, the uh, second hundred days in office of uh, the Edo State government and also the need assessment strategy that the Edo State government is uh, employing to uh, find out the needs of the people. If you recall, on the sustained of uh, on the twelfth day of November, twenty sixteen. That was when the governor was sworn in for his first term, and that ended sometime last year. And uh, on the 12th day of November 2020, the governor was sworn in for uh, the second term. So as we speak now, the second term is running, and the second uh, 100 days of uh, uh, the second term is still running. So uh, we have so many uh, issues, uh, talking about the district government, but most importantly, as it relates to development, but most importantly, it's uh, uh, the uh, recent strategy that the state government is employing to ensure that uh, he gets to know the needs of the people. So many people will say that uh, the area of road is one thing that needs attention. And uh, some other persons will also say that the area of healthcare is one thing that needs attention. Well, to look at all this, this money, we are so privileged to have Dr. Daniel Okoreafor, who is a policy expert. And of course, an expert in uh, communication development, also data management expert too. You welcome to this program this morning on our TV. Thank you for having me. All right. We're also, we're also privileged to have uh, Chief James Ezomo, the Ezomo of uh, Benin, who is a community leader. So you welcome to this Thank program you. this morning on our TV. It's Thank been quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> it's been quite some time. You welcome to uh, this program. Now, if we have plenty of time, we're going to let a uh, phone call. Uh, so that you can call in and make one or two contributions as we get along on the program today. Uh, don't forget that we also have Abuja standing by as uh, we see the re-emergence of Ebola in West Africa. Ikarata is standing by. We're going to be having that sometime around 9 o'clock so that he gets to uh, tell us what uh, they have in Abuja as uh, we get along on the program. Gentlemen, you welcome, you welcome one more time on the show. Thank now, you. we are talking about the need assessment strategy uh, Pari Pasu, the second hundred days in office of our governor, Governor Gordon Obaseki. Now, let's compare the first hundred days in office uh, in the first term and this second hundred days in office in the second term. I'll start with uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Okoreafo. Uh, you recall that uh, at the time the governor took over the f in the first term, uh, we were confronted by the need for social reengineering in the state in the sense that uh, prior to his takeover of office, you had the dominance of uh, uh, what we call uh, agro street urchins, who were uh, tax collectors, uh, revenue collectors for the state. You also recall that uh, the traffic system in the state at the time was in the lawless state, when young men will block the road and do whatever they like. But when the governor took over at the first tenor, deliberate attempts were made to address that, that issue and you recall that in many of our marketplaces where uh, the collection of levies was like uh, the use of force the governor took deliberate steps in the first 100 days to address those that issue or those issues and the result is you had a system where people felt a sort of peace in terms of the way they do their business or the attitude of uh, revenue collectors towards the people that was one unique step taken by the governor in the first term in his 100 days in office that uh, uh, attracted the minds of many people to what he was trying to do. In this second term, what the governor has taken step to do, uh, the issue of social engineering has been taken care of. Apart from now that we see local government revenue collectors trying to use a uh, force to do the same thing. However, what he did in the first term you know, addressed a, a, a serious issue, which was an image problem for our state. In this second term, you know, I believe the governor has uh, taken a look at some of the issues confronting our state. Deliberate efforts are now being made to get relevant data about the vulnerable members of our society in terms of those who have one form of uh, physical challenge or disability or the other so that uh, development needs or their basic needs can be addressed uh, in a tangential way. Mm. That was not the case in the first tenor. Apart from issue of taking data about the vulnerable, 
uh, you, your, your station here is been making the announcement on uh, the need for people to allow enumerators to take data about their communities, about their needs. The essence of all of that is that you cannot plan development without relevant data. You cannot also plan development without taking a look at uh, what the set priorities of government ought to be at specific times. If you look at the city of Benin and the other parts of the state, you realize that population growth is on the increase. Areas where initially there were no government primary schools, uh, community, new communities have emerged. And on the basis of this, there is a need to have a data about the number of persons who live in specific areas. The government would not have bothered taking about, talking about data if we have regular census that is viable. Unfortunately, the last national census we engaged in was in 2006. From 2006 to date, is over 15 years ago. And if you consider population growth at 2 point something percent per year, you realize that the, the, the state is growing at a very fast pace. Okay, let, so, let me pause you so that uh, I can bring uh, Chief James yeah. into uh, the yeah. show. Now, uh, Chief James, uh, we, we started by, uh, you know, trying to compare the first 100 yeah. days in office of Governor Gordon Obaseki and, of course, uh, the second 100 days in office that... Uh, uh, we're having a, where will you place your, your, your how will you describe your comparison? Yeah, yeah. for me, I think uh, Basaki simply uh, simplify governance, uh, amplifying governance. But of course, and the biggest developmental strategy of Obasaki was when he set up this allowed out summit conference, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, a, a situation whereby people, men and women, from the private, the public sector, merge to brainstorm how to progress, how to carry a dossier forward. And by, by this uh, interlocutory exercise, Edo is able to bring to the front burner for political discourse this catch a team, mega, you know. Also, our, it is, this was the basis for the governor's development strategy. You know, when you bring governors closer to the people, becomes government, you, you simplify governance. Right? Amplify government, not in the show form. And so by the time you begin to bring some, if, if, you, if you were to act, if I, were, if, we, if I were to rewrite the caption, allow that community, uh, allow that summit conference, I would have said, I would have, I would have written, during the year of government. <laughs> 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 yeah. During the year of government, to let the people know, to let government know what the people need. When you draw the year of government, it gives you roads. Draw the year, gives you amenities. I would have recaptured it that way. And so by the time, from the very beginning I'm saying, by the time you begin to discuss, it's not staying in your office, hiding away, you know, but right now you brought up a strategy whereby you want to talk to the people. All right, Chief, let's get your explanation in concrete terms now. <laughs> now, uh, you are a community leader mm -hmm. in Zebu. Yeah. Uh, compare the first 100 days mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the first tenure and this second hundred days in this second tenure. What's your comparison? Like? Evans, you know, the truth will be said. You know, conscience, I mean, the truth, uh, conscience of open wound, and the truth can actually heal it. If you're talking about uh, progress, of a dosage, we can't do with the Shomale, the comrade man. He started all this developmental uh, thing, you know. Obasa, we, we, we've heard that uh, Oshimila was going to do this, that Obasa will end it. That, 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 that what we heard the fall of us before the, before the trouble came between them, you know, and the people are, people not, people, people are, people, people are coming again to put Obasa on his feet. Yeah, with what Obasa is doing now. Yeah, it's a continuation of what the comrade governor started, okay. on the most serious. No. Won't you, don't, don't you think that there, there, there's meaningful progress from how he started with what is going on now? Certainly, from what Oshimila started. 
from how no we're looking at a basic first basket. thing on, yeah certainly as i said what we heard was she was going to do the major roads by the time she was true of basic do the journey road that was the thing we, that was the slogan we were hearing then before the trouble came between so basically they do a great job you know the roads are there but as, as long as there's this summit he listened to the government. He listened to the people. Okay. Now, now uh, 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 Dr. Daniel, uh, you were about talking about uh, the <coughs> mega data approach uh, strategy that the Edo State government, uh, you know, is imbibing now, is trying to employ now to uh, really uh, have a handle on the needs of the people. Now, uh, this strategy, do you see it feasible? Uh, looking at uh, the present uh, developmental expectations. Of the people in Edo states? Well, uh, I must be sincere with you. If I tell you government is going to address all our needs or problems, I think I will be playing the ostrich. The reality is that we cannot have development without the relevant data we need to plan development. That is the bottom line. What the government is trying to do is can we address development based on needs instead of sitting down in government house and say, we will give community A road, whereas road is not their major problem. Mm. Community B needs market, but you decide to embark on a school project. That is not their priority need. So what the government is trying to do is to say, we want to do development based on the most felt needs of the people. And those needs can only be addressed when you have relevant data about what the needs are. You know, I did a research on... Uh, the relationship between elected representatives and their constituents. And one of the dominant uh, features of that research was whether the people are involved in decision regarding what their project should be. And the result was very obvious that most of the time government just come in and say, we'll give you people light, we'll give you people water. Take a community, say, in Esalan, where water is their major problem, where old people will travel for kilometers to get water. If you ask them between water and market, what should be their need? They will go for water mm. instead of market. So the point we are making is that government has realized that development is about people. You don't do development for development's sake. It is about the people. And the only way government can make people realize or feel the impact of governance is to involve them in the process regarding what should be their priority projects. So this data collection that government is doing is to give opportunity for people to make input into the process by deciding what should be the need, what should be the priority of government. Don't look at this data collection from the perspective of only uh, physical infrastructure alone. Government is concerned about empowering people in terms of the vulnerable members of the society. <coughs> Elsewhere, when I was on uh, another media platform, and a question came regarding why this data you realize that for those with uh, a one form of disability or the other, you realize that, say, in Benin here, apart from the school of the blind that you have in Benin here, I doubt whether there's any other part of the state where you have such a school. Whereas there are people who have such challenges within the state. That's where. That's where. So the only way government can, if you say a local government, you have up to 30 or 40 people who have such disability, the state government can now plan to have a school of the blind for such people in specific location in that local government. Mm. So that as the children are growing up, they will not be uh, shortchanged. They will not be disadvantaged. That's part of what government is doing. If you travel regularly, sometimes you travel to places and you see a big project back on, on by government, and the result is the resultant effect is that people are not using such a project. Mm. The reason is that people were not the people were not involved regarding what, whether that is their priority project or not. After a while, grasses will overgrown that building. The structure will not be used, and the people do not see it as their own. So when you talk about development, there must be sense of community ownership of such a project or program. So what government is doing now is to ask the people to get involved in the process by collecting data regarding their needs. Once you're able to do that, by the time you start the process of implementation... This data you are talking about now, let's, let, so that our viewers out there will get to uh, understand. We're talking about uh, a group of information yes. that some persons are going to go around to collect from uh, people around. Uh, don't you, is that what you're saying? Yes, okay. we call them enumerators. Okay. They go into communities 
uh, uh, our streets. Forms are given to us to fill <coughs> for those who are educated. Those who are not educated, questions are asked, mm. answers are provided. On the basis of this data that will be generated, they will be processed. You can say, in order to local government, we have social number of people who have social challenge. This is the major needs of the people of Oredo local government. So when you, you, are, you are making your budgetary plans, you can plan your budget on the basis of this data you have generated from the people for effective development. Some persons may ask the question, government already, already know what our problem is. Uh, we don't, don't bother about water. Yeah, don't bother I, I about was, this. I, I was going to ask that question because uh, some persons will say that uh, uh, for a government that probably campaigned, uh, campaign through the new and crinings of yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Edo State, and of course, we heard from the people, their needs, and all that. And coming back to some persons, they want to, uh, you know, want to question that. Yes, you know, if you if you are a student of politics, you realize that during politics, uh, it is not the people that actually take those decisions. Mm -hmm. Some group of people will say, "This is what we present to the governor as our need." where the community members consulted regarding such decisions. And don't also forget that during campaigns, uh, it is party members that most of the time present what they consider to be agenda of the, uh, of the community. Okay, uh, Chief Ezemo, uh, this strategy we're talking about now is going to be involving uh, community leaders. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. And uh, that's why I had to uh, invite you. Now, uh, we're looking at the disposition mm. of uh, community people towards uh, this strategy. Uh, because if you don't uh, help government, government will not help you. Uh, so what do you think uh, should be the kind of uh, disposition towards this group of persons, uh, you know, that will be coming, going around to... Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, don't you look like uh, an exercise in utility? Because you don't need to attend universities to pay salaries. You don't need to be in the UI to know what people need these days. Uh, you must be a graduate before you become governor. Just, it's not important. So. I, I want to think that, as I said, so it doesn't look like an infertility. I want to think that uh, this summit, for instance, would have, been, would have, would have still been enough. In, in, would have still been enough. The lot without summits, where people gather to brainstorm. Okay, you would have preferred a situation where by it, it has, it has, in Lagos they have it. There's a name they call it in Lagos. I, I, I want to just, just let, let him make his point. <laughs> yeah. put, in Lagos, mm. they, they have it in Lagos. Mm. Doing, and they are doing great things in Lagos when they when they gather, they meet all the kind of a town hall meeting. Yes, sir. Oh, I mean, I mean, I think I, I had I watched the other one on, tele, on on television the other day. Mm. Even with the president was a, was also a part. Was also a part. You know, Lagos is a, a set of excellence. As, as I said, it's really so. So this summit is very, very, is, 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 is uh, good. No, I, I want to get what you're saying. Are yeah. you saying that rather than the government... Rather than going from place to place to seek... They rather have a community town as hall... It, as it used to be. ...invite the people so that they yes, ventilate... Yes, certainly. That's how it was. Okay. Uh -huh. So I don't even like... I don't say fertility mm. because within the government, you all go to school. So uh, we, we all know what we need, all right? Uh, from uh, 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 investment in infrastructure, education, uh, industries, building more industries. Uh, what people need? People need to get us our, our school level to get jobs. All right. For instance. All right. Now, now, now uh, 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 Dr. Dan, uh, just like what uh, Chief Ezemo is trying to explain, uh, so uh, that it won't be an exercise in fertility. fertility. We understand that uh, the mega data, the, the, the mega data approach uh, strategy now. It's, it's, it's supposed to be something that is supposed to last for 30 years. Am I correct? Yes. I read that, uh, you know, an information there. Now, uh, the fear is that uh, if we have such uh, uh, an approach that lasts for 30 years, what is the guarantee uh, that, uh, just like what Chief Isamo is trying to say, that this thing uh, will continue and at the end of the day to achieve its set aims and objectives? Thank you very much. Uh, Chief is looking at it from the perspective of... Uh, 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 community leaders' involvement in the process. That is not what the government is trying to do. I understand what he's talking about from the perspective of uh, empowering people in terms of providing jobs and all that. That's not what the government is trying to do with this data collection. Mm. Industries will come, opportunities will come for infrastructural development and all that. There's what we call development planning. When Nigeria gained independence, we had a development plan. First development plan, second development plan. You record that in the Abacha years, you had what they call Vision 2020. Why did the Vision fail? There were, there were no data. 
to interrogate what the plan was. If you must have development for a new state, let us say currently we have 10,000 disabled people or physically challenged people in a new state and making assumptions. What will be the projection for the next 30 years? What is the guarantee that these data may not be influenced? I mean, uh, you are going to have enumerators who are Nigerians that may want to influence. Uh, the if, if, data you, if you look at the form, mm. if you look at the form, there is a provision for the name, the address, uh, basic information you can get from individuals. And even some, you have cases where even the photograph of, of the individuals will be taken to enable, her, to enable us to have uh, reliable data. I was trying to say something before your question came. Yeah. We are not looking at development from just physical infrastructure, like I said earlier. Part of what this agenda is about is that, how do we rename our streets? You have been hearing of smart cities. Smart cities where, with your Google map, you can locate a house in Oluku. You can locate a house in Oredo. So part of this data collection is to enable us streamline all that so that when you key them into the system and you, you, you link it to Google, somebody in the U.S. can look for somebody in Nigeria without stress. So we should not look at it from only the perspective of uh, physical building, uh, those who need jobs and all that. But the whole essence of the data collection is to enable we restructure our city in terms of planning, in terms of needs, in terms of where should be priority projects, if you are citing industries now, what should be, where should be the location? Do you just wake up and cite industries? Those who live in local communities in those state. If you are talking about, if you are thinking about building an industry, what should be, where should be your, your, your immediate location? So on the basis of the data you will gather, we help you plan, this is what these people of this area need. Again, two communities or three communities on the basis of the data they will generate, government can use it to strategically plan. Let us have a community hospital for this on the basis of this type of ailment they are complaining of. Because part, if you look at the form, there are areas provided for health. Mm -hmm. In the area of health care, what uh, major health challenge do people face more? Okay. The uh, essence <coughs> of all that is to enable us, this go enable government to decide what should be a, the area of focus in terms of uh, development projects. Okay. Now, uh, Chief James, uh, we still have you here. Uh, you are looking at uh, instead of us having this uh, scenario, we should have uh, something like continuous, uh, uh, continuous, and something like uh, uh, a the community, uh, as used to be, uh, you know, uh, summits, a a town hall meeting, and all that. And, 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 and uh, but don't you think the problem that may be associated with that is that time may have since developed more than that? That's some of uh, the mm -hmm. arguments that come forward. Uh, when governments now try to use uh, the strategy of gathering people in a mm. community to get information from them, mm. don't you think so? Sir, uh, sir, sir, our problem is too much because, because we don't, we're, not, we're, not, we're not simplifying governance. We, make, we amplify it and make it hard for the people. As the scripture which says, the produce of the feed is for all. Belong to the king, the servants, everybody. But these days, you tell me I must go to university before I get a job. <laughs> Make it happen. I mean, I'm in Nigeria. So you are saying the community town hall uh, said, strategy approach sir, has sir, more sir, we make close in Africa. I, I, if I, if you, I, I, I had preferred the socialist kind of government mm. for Africa. We are just pretending to be. We are. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be insolent. Africa, because I'm a PhD holder, pretending to be there. I'm not there yet. The capitalist system is not our portion. It doesn't suit us. I would have preferred the social whereby everybody is a part of government. Everybody. Yeah, like, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that is I would have preferred that, that. Mm. the social system whereby everybody is a part. I mean, I mean, okay, everyday influx of uh, grad, new graduates. You tell me we don't know what the people need, what my son needs. Now, Chief Isomo, if you say the community approach uh, would have been the best, uh, don't you think that there may be a problem with that because it's going to require. Uh, you know, gathering uh, people, people at a particular time, in a particular time. place, mm -hmm. but that may be difficult because you may not have all persons or most persons, I should say, now at a particular uh, point at a particular place. And that may be difficult. Well, someone to present them, someone to speak for them. Mm. Simple as that. Everybody, everybody can't be there. I, I'm not against your, it's an idea, <laughs> but uh, we're just discussing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you must present, some, someone must present it. You, I mean, I, I'm here now, I'm the chief. I, I may be talking for all our chiefs. 
nationwide. It's like that. It should, let's, let's simplify this whole thing. You understand? I don't need to, uh, somebody is hungry, I'm speaking grammar. Give me food to eat. I'm speaking PhD. No, I don't work. All right, uh, as we wrap up now, uh, <laughs> Dr. Okora, for, uh, let's get more insights, uh, you know, a, on this a, a mega. Cardiac a cardiac <laughs> four. A four. Right. Four, four, four. Okay, cardiac <laughs> four. Yes. All right. So let's get more insights, uh, you know, this mega data uh, approach. Uh, uh, data will be generated. You want to start from there? What we should, what we are trying to tell our <coughs> people is that data is necessary for planning. Why we do census every year is not just to know the number of people in the state, but it's to enable government plan. If you see there are 20 people in a do state this year, what will be the number of people, what will the number amount to in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years? So the essence of this data collection is to enable government plan effectively. I understand what our chief is saying with reference to community involvement. Mm. Th that is an approach. But we need this data before we evolve community involvement or the leaders of a community regarding the management of projects. If we don't get data, we cannot address issues about uh, community needs. So it is from the data we generate we can discuss need. What the chief is saying will come when government start uh, engaging physical projects. They cannot call community leaders A, B, C, and say, Project A is coming to your community. Can you take ownership of it? But you need data from that community to enable you to decide what should be the project. If you don't have data, you cannot decide what project should be for the people. You recall what I said earlier. If you start projects without, the, without getting to know what the needs of the people are, they will not take ownership of it. It is by getting data you can plan development in terms of what should be the priority of needs of the people. And apart from that, it is true that people don't have jobs. If you have data about the number of people who need jobs, what type of jobs they are interested in, this enumeration process also takes cognizance of that. Okay. Both the educated and non-educated people about what, what sort of jobs do they, would they like to do. So that if you are attracting investors into specific areas, on the basis of what they ask you for, you cannot ask investors, we want you to invest in this area of our state want you to invest in this area of our state. The, the area where we just wake up and say, let us do this for the people, is gone. Development is participatory. Mm -hmm. A part of the process is to get the people, get to know what the people's needs are. It is on this basis you cannot say, ah, when we came to you three years ago, you filled a form about what should be your needs. This is what we, dis we discover from your community. And we want to give you this. Is this one okay for you or this is what do you prefer? This is what the government is trying to do. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Daniel. Uh, time, it's always uh, very short. Uh, uh, Chief, uh, one word, uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, now, now, my top son has an OND mm. in mass communication. Mm. One day, you saw a, a jeep coming to my company. That's what I came down as a furniture man. He said, Daddy, I, can't, I, won't, I won't go for that. I want to learn this job, artisan. Now, it's almost true. To avoid youth restiveness, I want the government to Look into the youths. Let's support them. Those who want to do business, like he's talking about now, well, that can be available. That, that can be necessary. Yeah. That, okay. Well, it's okay. Well, that, that, that's what it's saying. Since I'm not saying what you are saying is not correct, but let's simplify governance. Okay. Let's not make it hard. No, all right. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, because of time. Uh, Doctor <laughs> Daniel Ekeriafo, thank you, and also Chief you. Uh, James Ezomo a community leader in Uzebo in Benin City. Well, the program is still on this morning on ITV. All that we need is to contribute to what government is doing and uh, any strategy that government, uh, you know, is uh, putting in place to get information from uh, the people so that uh, government will be better informed on the needs of the people. We need to support government so that it will be good for all of us here. The program is still this morning on ITV, so let's take a short pause now on all the segments. Gentlemen, thank you so much.